Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we're kicking off Season 2 of the Global Geek Tour in Singapore. We're going to visit the Simlim Tower and Simlim Plaza and do an electronic shop in Chinatown. Later tonight, we're going to go over to the Singapore Hackerspace. We're in a mall in Singapore. It's a big mall, most of it's shopping, tourist agencies, clothes, that kind of stuff. But uh, it has one electronic store, which is Kova Electronics behind me. And this is Kelvin's favorite electronic store. Why is it your favorite store? Oh, um, Kova Electronics is very interesting. They have all sort of stuff. And every time you go in, you can find surprises, things that you never expect electronic, local electronic stores to have. Yeah, that's what I love about Kova Electronics. It's full of surprises. And it seems pretty crowded in here. Oh, it's very cr packed with things crammed in a very small area. Okay. And what, yeah, what can we expect to find in here? You, you have uh, LEDs, you have uh, your, I mean, your resistors, and uh, some of the very small connectors um, that you don't get, uh, you, you don't see in a local electronic stores. Yeah. I just found some 24-pin diff sockets. They've got the little arm that comes up so you can pop your dip chip in, uh, put the arm down and it locks, pop it up and pull your dip chip out. That saves a lot of pins from breaking when you're popping a chip in and out to program it and stuff. I really like these. This is the three-color RGB tub. Uh, they are selling at five fifty sing each. All right. And that's about four dollars. This is an incredibly cramped store. I think this is the tightest space I've ever seen packed with electronics. There's no space that's not used up there. We've got measuring, measurement and test equipment up on the shelf. There's just walls of parts everywhere, most of them in bags and, and bundles. These, uh, this is something really cool that I've never seen before. Uh, these strips of, of parts sealed into plastic, you just cut off one when you want it. They've got all sorts of stuff like this. They've got uh, vacuum tubes, switches, uh, connectors, headphones, buttons. It's amazing. It's a great way to store electronics and sell electronics and display them. Uh, it's a lot easier to see what you want here than, say, in a bag like that. I'm most excited about the variety. Uh, all these things are stuff that I would run down to my local shop to get if I were working on a project and didn't have them here, especially things like the milled dip sockets. You know, you need one in an odd number of pins and you just can't go and get that at your local shop. Uh, it's, it's very claustrophobic, which I think is a, a good thing. It's just, it feels like you're in a wonderland of electronics. Okay, and this is a, a wall of, of LCD screens, big giant ones and regular four by twenties. This is just LCD glass without a driver chip on it. That's really cool. Of all the electronic stores we've been in before, all over the world, I think this is the first time I've seen a speaker wall. They literally have a wall full of speakers and bags, little tiny piezo speakers, giant speakers. One of the things I think is so cool is, uh, you know, it's, it's self-serve. So here's all these centalum capacitors, all the capacitors in this, this case, and you can just pick what you want. This is a wall of uh, rubber belts for robots and stuff like that, all different sizes. This is something you would definitely order online. I think this is really the first time I've seen them in an actual brick and mortar shop before. Switches are one of my absolute favorite things to find in electronic stores. It's one of the things that's so hard to choose if you're looking at it in a catalog. It's only when you come to the store and feel it that you actually know it's the switch you want and the right switch for your project. We're going to pick up some screens and some LED matrices. So how, how do we buy things here? Yeah, um, what you do is that you usually take a tray, uh, just put what you want in, and then after that you'll go to the counter and check the prices, and then uh, if, I mean, if you want, you take it. We picked up a few things here. This is a RGB matrix, and this seems to be some sort of giant LED in red, maybe. We're not sure, but it's cool, so we're going to pick one up. This seems to be a, a red and green LED matrix. And here's a, a small a red matrix of some sort. Uh, there's no data sheet, we're not quite sure what they are, but they're really cool and we're gonna go and find out the prices on them. Our, our total is uh, 1050 for the LED box. That's about uh, maybe $8 US. They even sell magnets over here. You see, it's really, everything is everywhere and if you come find something you need, you should just ask them. Our first stop at a Singapore electronics store has been a smashing success. They've got all sorts of stuff we're interested in, like RGB, LED matrices, switches, buttons. I would love to have this store in my backyard. Now on to Simlim Tower for a look at some electronics wholesalers as well as a computer market. Street food in Singapore comes from hawker centers like this. There's lots of little stands and they all serve hot, fresh and delicious food. They say the best way to find a good one is to look for a line and wait in it. I got beef brisket noodles, my producer Mad Skills got some sort of fresh prawn dumpling, uh, 
We've got some chicken rice over here. This is a famous Singapore dish. This is fried noodles. We're at Simlin Tower, which is the second stop on our geek tour of Singapore. Now, there's also a Simlin Plaza. What's, what's the difference between the two of them? Um, Simlim Tower here, you get more electronics uh, components, whereas in a Simlim, Tower, uh, Simlim Square, what you get is more computer ready-made uh, electronics good like TV, cameras. Yes. Yes. And uh, what, what sort of things can we expect to find here in the tower? You can find all kinds of electronic stuff, basically uh, capacitors, buttons. I guess the best part about this is you can actually touch them, so you can see how it fits into your project. You know. I mean, what, what, what you have in this shop is that you get all the uh, schematics of all the various uh, products. Here's the inverter, UPS, and then you have uh, LCD monitors. So some of the service manual for the LCD monitors. All right, let's see what we have. This is our third stop in Simlim Tower. This is another crowded shop full of parts. There's a lot of electronic stuff here though. Again, like uh, in the previous place, we found lots of connectors. Those are really handy. This is the kind of stuff that we never see in our local shops. Is there anything here in particular that you like? You can run AC also. Um, yeah, there are uh, many motors uh, over here. Like, um, for example, they, can, they are used as demos for users to take a look at, to see the potential of. As you may already know here at Dangerous Prototypes, we're particularly special fans of buttons and knobs in stores because these are things that are impossible to choose from a catalog and get what you want the first time. These are some really nice metal knobs could use these with a potentiometer. We've got a secret project going on that uses a, a couple of uh, rotary encoders. These will be a sweet addition to that project. And like I promised, buttons. There's no shortage of buttons here. Uh, these are some of my favorite, the light up buttons. Hey, check this out. It's a giant novelty button. Who wouldn't want that to start up their Arduino in the morning? This shop really reminds me of, of the shop we went in Tokyo with Taken, one of his favorite stores. It's very narrow and crowded here. But we were walking down this aisle and we came across project cases. They have every imaginable style of beige project box you, you could ever want. But uh, nothing clear, nothing cool, nothing I'd want to show off my project in. Boy, am I excited. I've got a special treat for you. Kelvin arranged an interview with the owner of this LED shop and we're finally going to figure out who buys all of these LEDs. Previously, we are dealing with electronic parts, which uh, dealing with selling of components, or we are helping students to uh, modify some kits. Now, at present, we just switch over to this branch, dealing with LED-related product, okay. LED lamp, LED panels, you know. And this panel, in fact, is a very in product yeah. and selling quite well. Yeah, you know, we've, we've been all over Asia doing these yeah. tours, and yeah. every city has an LED store, so they uh -huh. must be really popular. Yeah, yeah, yes. they're getting popular, and uh, this LED is supplied to a lot of Singapore for a company or for uh, some short-term exhibition, yeah. you know. This is something new that I've not seen anywhere else. He's got uh, little strips of, of samples of the LED strings. All, all the different types and, and slightly different lengths, but they're already prepared, so you can try it out. Maybe if you just need a little bit, it's perfect for your project, but if you wanted a sample before you bought a reel, this would be ideal. Very nice. This is actually a showroom for a PCB fabrication shop. And it's manufactured locally here in Singapore. Yes, this is, is manufactured here locally. It's a bit expensive, but if you need fast turnaround time, that's probably the way you need to go. We've reached the top floor of Simlim Tower. There's a lot of great electronic stores here. A lot of people told us it was like Akihabara in the 80s, but to be honest, we'd love to have this in our backyard. There's component stores on every level. Unfortunately, we didn't find anything in Service Mount, but how often do you find that anywhere? You guys really undersold this. You know, I, it, I think, you know, compared to Akihabara, there are more hardcore serious electronics and kit stores here than I, I saw in Tokyo. It's a really nice shops. We've come across the street from Simlim Tower to what's Simlim Square. Now, what, what can we find here? Right, um, computers, cameras, uh, TVs. Actually, you can find pretty much uh, anything you need to build your own. 
PC, so motherboards, RAM, hard disks, yeah. In the back alleys, we found several component shops. This one has a whole selection of connectors. Um, if you want to get uh, all these RF connectors, uh, this is the place to get off the counter, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have all the various converters, uh, BNC, N connector, TNC, SMA, what have you. It's all found here. Here, there's more parts in bubble wrap, but these aren't for sale. These seem to be samples that are put into this little tray and wrapped over. That's kind of cool. So we're up at the top of Simlin Square, and, and you're right, there's not a whole lot of electronic components here, but you know, the computer stuff is amazing. And if, if I lived in Singapore and wanted to build a computer, this is definitely where I'd come. One of the best things about this trip is how amazing the food in Singapore has been. Uh, the street food is wonderful, and the hawker stalls have just great stuff everywhere. It's really cheap, it's warm, it's fresh. We haven't eaten a single bad thing the entire time we're here. We spent all morning exploring the electronics markets in Singapore, and now we're going to check out the Singapore hacker space. Can you show us around the space a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so right now here we actually have the very, very big open area. So uh, our members actually um, so sort of work out here during the day. A lot of them are running startups, so they basically just need a desk, they need aircon, and they need internet to work. Yeah. And in the evenings, uh, we actually have uh, meetups from various user groups and basically people who want to share and meet. They just come here and we take a lot of chairs on the corridors and we place it down here. Excellent. And we flash the uh, projector and then basically they can just simply have a meetup. This is actually a hybrid between a lab and the pantry, right? Okay. So we have a fridge here and inside we uh, stock with beer right now. A nice. lot of beer for today and uh, soft drinks as well. And if members or even guests who actually want to actually consume the drinks, they simply take a drink and then they just tip our jar. Right? So it's a very much an honest space system. This is a very, very cool uh, display. Uh, it's there because our previous tenant actually had this, not because he designed it. Okay, so. Okay, so we have a lot, a lot of books. Uh, fiction over here, and basically books on entrepreneurship, engineering, uh, history, politics. I think we have a few Kama Sutras in this section over here. Okay. And here is actually the quiet area, okay? Uh, this is for members who actually want to actually work in a more quiet environment because outside can be sometimes noisy because members get, get really excited. So very much uh, this space uh, is very uh, community run. We don't actually have a full-time staff member and we expect members to take ownership of the space. Here is this one, okay? So something happens and basically this label has to be there. If not, accidents will happen. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, we very much, we actually like to document this space, so you can come in very quickly. Yes, and yeah, there's this one more label for the toilet paper. Yeah, obviously somebody doesn't care about a puppy dying, right? I think we have, uh, I mean, members who are paying subscription to yeah. actually support the rental of the space around like 40 odd. Very good. Yeah, but I think uh, if you talk about so-called friends and affiliates, you know, yeah. uh, I think our Google group itself has around like 700 people. Oh. So we have very, very interesting discussions. Uh, we talk about technical stuff, we talk about hacking, we talk about um, even things like where to go for food, where to find a particular style of screw, or even how to get uh, employment pass in Singapore. So we're here with Matt, who uh, you may know from the blog or the forum, and uh, he's showing us some of the hardware he's made. This is a, a board with some LEDs on it. One of the LEDs are actually mounted backwards and shining through through holes. That's very cool. And, and why did you do this? <laughs> uh, to be able to actually have um, touch sensors in front of, of, yeah. of the LEDs. It, it was just a test to actually test if I could mount the LEDs yeah. on the backside, flipped over. And this is a shield that I designed a couple of years ago, an Arduino shield that has. Uh, it's a very simple thing. It has uh, four of the uh, shift registers, 595s, a bunch of transistors for the road drivers, and then uh, four pieces of the 8x8. On eBay, I can get um, the displays for like $1 each. From Taobao, I got them for 10 cents each. That's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. We had a great time here in Singapore. From the parts and components in Simlim Tower to the computers and gadgets in Simlim Square, and our favorite, the cozy and crowded Koba Electronics in Chinatown. A huge thanks to Kelvin and Singapore Hackerspace for being fantastic hosts. Remember, you can grab our Google Map Player and visit all these places yourself, and follow us on Twitter to see live updates from our next Bubble Geek Tour. 
Also visit the blog for more pictures and giveaways from the Singapore trip. We'll be back next week with complete coverage of Singapore's first Maker Faire. Thank you for watching. How's it going? Oh, it's oppressively hot and humid here. We spent the last hour trying to shoot the conclusion and people kept walking through the shots. And I'm sweating like a pig. We had to stop and wipe me down every five minutes. It's time to hit some air conditioning and get some lunch. Somewhat fascinated by how much liquid's coming out of me, how fast. Our producer Mad Skills looks like a melted ice cream cone. We're at Gardens by the Bay, and the super trees behind me are part of a renewable energy system that powers the whole park. Hold on, Next. hold on, I got sweat in my eye.